inmate 63,357-year prison term has surpassed the 10-year socialization threshold. Inmate must attend and complete state order pop cultural reintegration for the years 1999 through 2011. To aid in your pop rehabilitation the universe has assigned the following pop culture specialists, Lisa Ledesma and Peter Vinson. Do you agree to these terms of release, inmate? Yes, I do. And thank you once again for this opportunity. It means a lot for me and my family. All right, we got to finish off 99. Come on, let's just fucking finish this shit off. Woodstock 99. Let's talk about it. It was a shit show, literally. There were people sliding around in literal doo-doo. They had good intentions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Like, in the, like from what I heard, you know what I mean? Like, I was far away from that scene. But from what I heard, like, it was, yeah, was, they were supposed to, they were essentially, the way at least it was put out, the general populace was that Woodstock yeah. 99, it's just the ups, it's, it's upside I down. I don't understand uh, 60s, you know I mean? That's what we that, said. how you can have that bill and call it Woodstock though like i understand woodstock's a place or whatever like i get that but to me like the woodstock name they were just capitalizing was that but was it wasn't it hold held uh, like actually in like i don't a know it was huge parking lot or something like that i don't remember it wasn't even at like was. a farm or anything. well was it the original woodstock on just like a huge ass piece of like undeveloped land yeah my parents my parents were going to woodstock they were uh i think they were like just a couple miles away but my sister was born so I 100% kind of curtailed that situation. They're always like in the background. There's like, your parents are like, um, that like, uh, Tom, like Forrest Gump. Remember Forrest Gump where he's just like in the background where at the end it shows like all the pictures of that fate historic back like, in the background of like every single one. That's like your parents. Like every time there's like something historical, like your parents are like back there in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Tweakers! 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 <laughs> this weekend only, don't miss the Royal Collegiate Society of Meth Users online open house with live demonstrations with Professor Snaggle Mouth. I'll be demonstrating the intrinsic rotational values of light bulbs used as pipes in a commercial back alley setting. And just added special guest speaker Dr. Demon Beard. I'll be speaking about recent developments in the unifying mathematical fentanyl theory. Together we will explore the working concept that a $50,000 car can be equal to or less than a 20 bag of stepped on baby laxative and drywall. <laughs> Main stage musical guests include Brud Brillo and the Ass Jacks, Pimp Brisket, and many more. This weekend only, don't miss the Royal Collegiate Society of Meth Users online open house. <laughs> this weekend only. Oh my god. I don't know if you remember girls walking around with their thongs hanging out above their pants. <laughs> do you remember that? Even when that was a fashion, I do remember that as a fashion. I don't know. I see something jam that far up someone's ass. I'm just like, that's, I'm not about that. I don't, I, it's something about that that feels like they, that person's in pain. Like I should save them right now, not try to bang them. <laughs> the like I would be like, are you okay? <laughs> We will be right back after this nonsense. Recording from the underground windowless panel van parked down the street, it's Conspiracy Corner, hosted by the double C of Intrigues, world-leading conspirer, Conspiracy Kevin. Talking mushrooms? Did you see the talking mushrooms? Ah! You see about that shit? Thank you. I'm so fucking happy. Yes. I didn't read anything about it. I was just hoping you were going to fucking bring it up and you were going to teach me about it. I read I read the actual university case study. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, my God. Yes. So, mushrooms have discovered that mushrooms actually use a language. Wait, mushrooms have discovered that mushrooms use a language? That's what I'm getting at. That's what you just said. We'll fucking get there. <laughs>
No, scientists have discovered mushrooms, like, actually communicate uh, in between each little nodule. Mushrooms are, like, the largest organism in the world and one of the oldest. Yeah. Right? And so they've discovered, up to this point, they've discovered 50 words. So it's not, like, a new thing to say that, like, a species of animals. I mean, this is the first time we've seen, like, a fungus or something like that communicate. But, I mean, animals communicate all the time. What makes this or whale songs and stuff like that? Oh, 100%. And we can kind of interpret, uh, you know, like, a bird call like that might be, like, a warning. But this is the first time... We we've ever encountered a different species that language is structured the same as human language. So they've decoded sentences. So the way we use to make a word the same setup and pronunciation essentially, not the pronunciation but the same like grouping of words you know what I mean? Like how we just place things together. You know, it's like the syllables and like nouns and stuff. I have a question because I was actually gonna, I, I was actually going to ask you about this because I heard about the story and I'm fucking fascinated by it. Dude, this is not conspiracy corner. This is real. This is fact. I'm taking us out of conspiracy corner or, or I'm diving into conspiracy corner. It was actually on Jimmy Kimmel show as well. They, it was a, uh, not that I'm saying that if it's on Jimmy Kimmel, it's 100% fact. I'm just saying. Yeah. If it's on J- Jimmy Kimmel said it. <laughs> What, have you seen it? Jimmy Kimmel said it, it's fine. It's, it's, it's reached that level of acceptance within the world as scientific fact that it's even reached the higher echelons of pop culture. First of all, my job here, and I'm going to just play this. My job here is to play the, the skeptic, the straight man, and to kind of, okay, because I love this theory. So I don't want to take away from it, but I also want everyone to remember that you've read the actual study. So what you say about what has come from the actual study, like, I understand that. But you ha- we have to remember that mainstream media, things like The Guardian, Jimmy Kimmel, Random Places, will take these studies and make them... Compress it. Yeah, exactly. And, and make it sound easier. Unlike me, who I will read the thing after I've smoked way too much hash, smoke a couple joints, and then vape for about two hours straight. And then I will recount uh, what I read. So that's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's fact. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just saying, like, we always have to take what they say. If somebody's making a monologue joke about a certain subject, we can't then say, like, what they joked about is, like, is fact. If I'm playing the straight man, we have to remember. It's not like there is a Google Translate button on our phones for mushroom. You want to get your history from un- as unbiased sources as possible. Like you want to get your news from your sister-in-law who smokes too much weed and goes on the internet and tells you about things. <laughs> like a normal, <laughs> like your human average Joe bro. I'm down here at what was supposed to be the finals of the 2022 Junior League of Math Wizards, but due to a miscommunication, I'm actually reporting 200 miles away at the 2019 Junior Meth Wizard and Booger Beer Championships. Yet, since I'm here, I managed to sit down with the gold foil winner in the uh, 3 a.m. couch chop. Mr. Beard, perhaps you could explain to those that are interested in getting into this relatively illegal sport, uh, might go about beginning. First you stay up about three days, then your couch gets bugs, you know, and that your door's too small, probably. So, uh, then you get mad at the door, so then you gotta chop the couch up real good, like, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Okay, I see. Well, uh, now that you're an official winner, how does it feel to have uh, finally made it? Well, I just, uh, I just feel small with that eight ball. Uh, I thought you were a shadow monster, and it's like, okay. <laughs> It's a, it's a good thing you're, you're not real from yesterday. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Beard. Uh, you might want to see someone about that uh, quickly. Uh, this is uh, Great Durkle reporting from uh, Meth Fuel Delusions of a Wizard. Back to you, Tom. We know that there are like various clicks and and, and and like moans and sounds that come out of dolphins, right? That are language, right? We have no like Rosetta Stone for it, right? We can't say like click, 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 moan, click, click, ooh means hello, how's your day, right? Are mushrooms something that we think that we could decode what they're saying? And this is what's so exciting about this is we have actually decoded language to a certain degree, to a very, to a very, to a very rudimentary degree, as much as we could with the time we have and resources at the moment. <laughs> 
each variety of the mushroom has different, I won't want to say intelligence levels, but different levels of vocabulary. And the one, the highest level of vocabulary we found, forget the actual genus of the mushroom, but it had 50 word vocabulary. Now the average American, European, in their average vocabulary have 20,000 to 30,000 words compared to a 50 word vocabulary. But this is where it becomes tricky. And they're like, well, we, we can communicate with them now. Then if we already know, we could tell them, oh, are you hungry? Or there's something coming? Or, you know, I mean, what the language was, hello, goodbye, a very rudimentary, but we actually couldn't because within we have discovered that within those 50 words, they're very much more complex than European languages. Although they're structured verbally the same as our language, it's the inflection that is put upon the word by the sender or the mushroom in this case to the other one well that was another question i had for you who are the mushrooms talking they're talking to each other are they talking to any other plants or to trees or anything or they're only talking it was done within a laboratory so there wasn't outside sources that they were allowed to communicate with so i don't we don't actually know that okay so you know how fungi like mushrooms are the mushrooms are the blooms right but the fungi is actually like a a big thing that's like underneath the ground right after reading this article i love mushrooms you know i mean not necessarily like we don't necessarily even eat a lot of mushroom yeah Going out and with looking at them, and I'm always trying to like you know I mean careful. But you know what those are? Oh. Every every mushroom you have ever eaten, every mushroom you ever had in your mouth, you grilled up with the onion and the butter and the garlic. Oh, it's so fucking savory. You put it on the fucking steak. You put it on the fucking sandwich, right? All up in your mouth. You know what that is? That's a fucking schmeckle. They only poke their fucking schmeckles up above ground to fucking breed. You just ate a. Fu- you just got a fucking cock sandwich. Hey, congratulations there. How's that fucking taste? Delicious. Delicious. That is one delicious fucking dick, right? Right there. Dude, I was thinking about this. The flavor of umami is basically mushrooms. Like, is, don't you think umami is like, I know people say meaty, but like, um, like it's really that mushroom essence. So umami's dick. <laughs> umami's a mouthfeel. I mean, and I'm not trying to be dirty. It is totally a mouthfeel. Yeah, I feel the mouthfeel. But anyway, that's a fun fact. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about a mushroom. Our reproductive organs are our privates. Mushrooms are the opposite. The only public piece they have is their wang a Everything else they keep private. No, everything else they keep private. That's like their only... <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe there's a species out there. There's probably a... So imagine this. There's a species out there. They bang in their ear. They shove their ears together, right? So they all walk around with like earmuffs on, right? And they see humans and they're like, oh my God. They just walk around with the holes in their heads exposed like a bunch of perverts. Do you know what I mean? Like, like we can't really judge mushrooms in that way. It's a funny punchline, but I'm playing the straight man once again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Schmearsmoo from Earholes.glorp, and we believe there's an earhole vibrator out there for everyone. From cottontail vibrators to discreet cotton swabs, these sexual ear canal wellness products can help you de-stress experience new perceptions or explore your ear holes with a partner. Check out our all-new Earmuff 5 model with the intense ear canal stimulation that you deserve. The contoured Earmuff 5 fits inside the inner ear lobe and presses right against your most sensitive spots to deliver vibration so powerful, it'll leave you quivering. The handy remote control lets you switch functions or surrender it to your aficionado and let them tease you with intense sensations. Visit earholes.glorp. Earholes.glorp, a proud division of Limited Intelligence Technology Interdimensional LLC. Well, here's what I have to say, and something that I believe in my deep, darkest of my soul's heart. All plants communicate, all of them. No, I mean, they've, yeah, they've found that. You know that, you know, that they've found actually that trees, they scream when they're screaming. All of them. They all, like, I don't, I think, I really think that there's going to be a reckoning and I don't know, it's going to be hundreds of thousands. I don't know how long it's going to be a long time past when we're dead or whatever. But at some point we're going to realize that like we have spent a really long time thinking that humans are this like special species that only do a lot of things. And we're going to realize that like we are just on our own plane 
trees live thousands of years. So if you sped up like watching a tree over thousands of years and like condensed it down into like a human life, like you'd probably watch like a thing live its life, communicate, change shape, grow. It's like a little fly just buzzing around. It's like, man, there it goes. Yeah, we are. Yes. To a tree. That's exactly what we are. When you watch a, when you watch a fucking mosquito zoom by you and like you never see that motherfucker again, that's that person like taking a walk. Like that's the tree, how the trees see us. Because our lives are the lifespan of a mosquito to them it's all about perspective you know and and time is something that we take for granted that what we experience as time is time 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 have you been following fucking time no don't get me in a fucking time lisa give me some time bro the fucking time i don't really believe in time so check this out so they just discovered that time doesn't exist again right for one thing this is old fucking news all right like people have been saying that for fucking thousands of years you know what i mean and proven no and the moment somebody said that shit to me i resonated with it and i understood it because i have experienced moments you this is gonna sound crazy and i'm all of a sudden gonna sound like the crazy one but i have experienced moments where i am in two places in time at the same time because we're all experiencing everything at the at, right now at the same time yeah because time doesn't exist and they've known that you know the story of the turtle and the hare you know that story uh yes i know the story of the turtle and the hare so that's based on ancient greek philosophy and the theory is because the turtle wins is because they both start and finish at the same moment because they believed that time was like a flip book of not moments it's a perception that those moments are moving to us they just took two cards essentially from that flip book is perception you're like well then how is it the perception and then how does things change and move then so how does that perception occur and it's because within the flip book itself the flipping is it's the causation there is causation they've discovered meaning that one thing started it all someone dropped that marble and then it went a million times over again and that's how like a lot of ancient uh, I don't want to say Fuck. No. no 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 I don't like thinking about this okay I was about to tell you how to rule the world Lisa <laughs> honestly honestly you just blew my mind right now I'm just stuck in the fact that like time at one point wasn't and time somehow got kicked off and like I'm still there I'm still there I'm there Welcome to Storytime with Cosmo the Clown presented by Limited Intelligence Technologies. This week Cosmo reads The Turtle and the Hare by Zeno Parmenides, 5th century BC. Come on boys and girls, let's get up and have some fun with Cosmo the Clown. Once upon a paradox, a rabbit was boasting about how fast he could run. He was laughing at the turtle for being so slow. Much to the rabbit's astonishment, the turtle defied with a race. The rabbit thought this was a good joke and accepted the challenge. The fox was to be the umpire of the race. As the race began, the rabbit raced way ahead of the turtle, just like everyone thought. The rabbit decided to give the turtle a sporting chance, and waited until the turtle got to the halfway point before he raced to victory. By the time the rabbit reaches the turtle's starting spot, the turtle had moved only slightly forward. He went at full speed to the finish line, and the time it took for the rabbit to close the distance the turtle has gained only slightly. Although the distance between them grows ever smaller, the rabbit must always cross the steps separating them at any given moment, by which time the turtle will have advanced a little. Therefore kids, the silly rabbit who take too lightly the turtle's power of quantum mechanics was always fractions behind the turtle's place, since in order to reach even the halfway point the rabbit must cross half that space as well, and so on. Ad infinitum. In order for the rabbit to start the race he first had to cross an infinite number of points, a task that cannot be accomplished in any finite period of time. And in the end we learn if the fox even takes the first step the race is impossible. Cosmos Moral, never underestimate the weakest component of quantum mechanics. So the mushrooms are talking and they, they think in a couple of years that AI will translate. Will translate. Yeah. Why can't we 
translate the dolphins then? Because the sentence structure isn't the same. The language structure isn't the same. And that's what's so like amazing. Like dolphins are more alien. So they're less alien than we thought. Yes. Like they're sent. That's what makes it so amazing is that we have found another species that we can actually decode. I mean, because you we'll probably never be able to like have like some machine talks to like your house cat and your house cat can actually communicate with you. Just because of the way the brain is set up with their language, it doesn't it won't translate over. But could we have a, could we have a machine that attaches to your cat's brain where a little light lights up that says angry or a little light lights up that says like hungry or that, a little light that yeah, like you know what I, I mean, mean? That, like those that is yeah basic rudimentary probably like I'm talking like we'll be able to actually have a conversation with a mushroom the oldest living and we don't know what kind of memory obviously it has memory we don't know what sort of memory it, like historical memory it has imagine that the implications for our own world it would have all the answers to the, to the past well it's only going to have answers to like weather what weather was like or like things like like it's not going to know like what was on TV. I don't worry about what's t- in TV at dinosaur times Lisa <laughs> Oh, that it's not that old. No, but I'm saying we don't know how their the information system is stored or passed on in duplication, right? Or mm, reproduction. True. I mean, if you look at it from a very human aspect, it's very difficult to see. We can't look at it from human. You know what I mean? We have to no, completely that's the same. remove ourselves. Is that like the the memory is different? It might have been passed on from millennia, millennia, but what millennia would it, ago. Still, what would it know? I mean, that's the question. What would it know when it pops its head up? What is it hearing? What senses does it actually have? What does it hear? Does it feel? Oh, that's true. We don't know. Does it taste? What other sensories does it have? Does it have senses that we can't even... It's not going to see in the way that we do. No, but what kind of sensories does it have that we just couldn't even fathom? Fuck, dude. And how does this see the world? right. Could it be that it is as we are in tune? So, like, we think of ourselves in tune with what is going on above dirt and water level. Like, that's our... Like, could it have a lot of information about what happens? If we could have a fish that could talk, we know that motherfucker could tell us a lot about what happens under the ocean that there's a lot of shit going on in the ocean right but we don't think about like is there there's probably a bunch of shit going on under the fucking soil and we haven't even considered that like an earthworm like i'm thinking of something else that we know of that lives of a vole like something like that but even a mushroom is even better because it's like really in tune i mean a mushroom needs other rotting matter to exist to so it's very in tuned with its surrounding it all makes sense lisa have you ever heard of the sacred mushroom in the cross no it was written in the 60s right so the vatican once again smoked a lot of shit and remembering after smoking a lot more shit but anyway so the vatican hired i think it was a harvard or another like prestigious university and, and like they pretty much brought all the ancient like language specialists that they could get to decode. And this this was huge. This was huge uh, news, especially during time, is when they decoded the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? And then they wrote their synopsis and their findings and passed them forward to like the Vatican and stuff. And one of the people that came out of that wrote book, The Sacred Cross and the Mushroom. And then the paperwork was hidden away somewhere. It didn't actually come out until the, I want to say the early 90s. Uh, it became popular again when they got, the papers got released and they actually brought up and interviewed, because this was huge news when this came out because they were like top language experts in the world, right? I mean, these were the top experts and they had decoded the Dead Street Scrolls, which was huge because we're like, you know, I mean, a lot of faiths were based on these scrolls. And so it was huge news. And so all these scientists came out and they all agreed that according to the scrolls, it appeared that Jesus as at least referenced in the scrolls was in fact uh, a mushroom, a giant hallucinogenic mushroom. And that the Dead Sea Scrolls actually explains actually <laughs> explains the early the early Christian <laughs> faith, not today's, where it has blossomed into, I'm sure, you know, I mean, a great, uh, loving organization. Back then, at least, was started with, like, a weird mushroom cult, and then it, like, followed through the ages. <laughs> Uh, and then so the Vatican actually sued all of the scientists once again to like try to shut them up about this during this time period. I do. How could Jesus? Because it was an analogy, up. right? The whole thing, all those stories and stuff like that. It was, they were just all like made up like conceptions that yeah. were derived from like taking the mushroom teas and the stuff like that. And that that was actually like the basis of, of the religion themselves. Like when you look at the color coding. Okay. What about the bread and the the, bre- the fish or whatever, where he took a fish and turned it into a bunch of fish? Didn't you? Or something like that. So what is that? What's the allegory? Take enough there? mushrooms, Lisa. You're not worrying about some fucking bread and fish, all right? <laughs> 
So that's going to be the allegory constantly is just take mushrooms. <laughs> this is what it is. It's the mushrooms the whole time. The language they got in, they done. You know what they did, Lisa? You know, all they poke up, they mind fucked. Literally mind fucked the humans into starting <laughs> and doing all kinds of crazy shit. Because all they were doing is eating the fucking dicks just left and right. And, fuck. and then the mushroom, though, they're like, I'm going to get you. And they were mind fucking them and just controlling the world. And that's who controls the world today. That's what they don't want you to know. Mushroom people. Not mushroom people. People controlled by. <laughs> I will say it's a much better theory than the lizard people. <laughs> Have you ever considered a career with limited intelligence technologies? Well, now with LI Industry Online Degree Certificates, you can be fast-tracked to a possible yet unlikely career with limited advancement opportunities and grueling workloads at Limited Intelligence Industries. Limited Intelligence Industries, where we stopped caring and now want you to give us your data and money. 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 Do you know the mushroom's natural enemy? It's an anchovy. Why did I hear why did I hear that somewhere recently? I swear I heard that somewhere. I heard that these shortest it's they said something about like the shortest mushroom word is longer than like the longest English word. Yeah, and that's what it is. And then they just changed one inflection on this, so it's just like Yeah. But it's still just a trip to me because I just keep hearkening back to dolphins, right? Where it's like we know they're talking like, how have we not cracked that code yet? That was a huge thing. It's like back in those days it was a big thing like remember that lady who fucking lived with a dolphin and then like started fucking it do you remember that she like lived in an she lived in an apartment that was like half flooded and she lived there with this dolphin and they started banging or something dude i don't know man <laughs> we got here but anyway <laughs> this is what i think i think this brings up an, an excellent point though when using yeah the ai to decode this language because we as a human are very concerned about fucking ai taking over the world or doing this or doing that you know what i mean without our consent you know what i mean we want to be the masters in control of this new tool or uh, essentially i mean you know what i mean it's just electricity and stuff like that so it is i would say some sort of life form but i'm not going to go that far but anyways they want to be in charge of this uh great new tool and and as everything becomes more automized and stuff like that over the years. Automated. Automated. <laughs> Beep boop. Automization. Automized. Automized. Well, whatever. Not a, not a word scientist. But I'm saying this brings up a good point of being concerned that AI in the AR takeover is because we're very concerned about what if the AI is able to communicate with the mushrooms and then the mushroom takes control of the system. Have we thought about that? And then if that happens, what not that a great weakness within our species, you know, great arsenal of tools or whatever you want to call them that they could be used against us by another species or whatever? I'm going to say, why isn't DARPA funding me to look into help mushrooms not take over the world? Why am I getting that fucking government grant? That's a good grant. Okay. I would say given the fact that we eat, I was honestly just going to say we eat more mushrooms than they eat people. And then I realized that that's probably not that true. <laughs> Nope. It's just a waiting game for them. It's just a waiting game because they're getting us one way or the other, dude. I'll get you. I'll get you. They're fucking getting us, dude. Once again, we're just a mosquito. Oh, fuck. Okay. I had two thoughts. Number one, psilocybin. Like, I wonder, I mean, obviously some of them have things that can kill us. And like, is it just an accident that one of them? Oh, is that a mind meld? Is the psilocybin a fucking mind meld? Is that where that's coming from? Are you reaching into what's that movie? movie want to be john malkovich instead of going through a fucking tunnel you're sucking off a mushroom yeah or just like like maybe experiencing a tiny snib of how they experience things because mushrooms psilocybin i cannot sit when i take mushrooms it's very hard for me to be somewhere with walls around me i need to be somewhere more organic i'm very attracted to organic shape like i don't like man-made stuff on mushrooms and I never really thought it could be that it's just like my hippie blood but I, I've heard that from other people too that they don't really like to be in like a square you know modern looking space when you're on mushrooms you want things you know what that's something to look into so can we just fucking pump you full of psilocybin and then let you loose on the mushroom code and see if you can decipher it on see if I can figure it out psilocybin? maybe that will crack it dude <laughs> 
I'll write you a thesis so. up. <laughs> Do it. Like, look, I'm willing to come there and take a lot of mushrooms and look over your research. <laughs> I do my best work at home, so I would prefer if you could send it to me, it'd be great. I, I will donate my body. <laughs> I'm donating my body to science. Fill me up with shroom and expose me to their language. I have one more mushroom question. How does this affect vegans? Guess who's fucking talking now, motherfucker? Yeah. For real. I mean, the more plants we discover, what do you do as a vegan? Are you going to sit there and say that like cows that they're closer to us so they're like worth more so we can eat them? No, that's what I'm saying. You're still judging one life over another. It's unfortunate, but it's a circle of life because for that plant to live, something else had to die. That cow to live, something else had to die. I'm the farthest from vegan. I am 100%. In my perfect world, animals would all be hunted. I'm very pro hunting. I'm not pro like wild game, put a a head on your wall type hunting. I don't like that kind of hunting. I'm saying hunting to feed yourself or your family. 100% pro that. There's no better life for an animal than living its regular natural life and then being shot. Deer don't die of old age. Something eats them. In the regular world, things like rabbit and deer and like things like that, they get eaten by other animals. That's the way it fucking works. Like mice, all that shit, they're food. I don't feel bad about eating them if they're treated properly before they die. My ideal world, everybody hunts the food that they eat. The meat, if you want to eat meat, you go out, you kill it, you fuck. I don't even care about buying from a hunter. I'm saying the ideal life for the animal would be to live in the wild and then get hunted one day. That's their life. That's the life of a deer. It's the life of a deer. It's either us or a wolf or a puma or whatever. Like something's killing that motherfucker. They don't lay down and lay on a pretty deathbed and get nursed like into death. Like that's not what happens to a deer ever. You know, I was vegan for 10 years. I feel like it's it's like stepping outside of the circle and saying you're better than the circle. That's what it is. It's an exclusionist view of the world, of being like, that's nature. I don't want to interrupt this circle of life. I don't want to interrupt the nature. It's like, motherfucker, who are you to interrupt? You part of this motherfucker. What are you talking about? It's like, shit. You in here with the rest of us? Where the fuck? You know, it's like, god damn it. What about garden? What about gardens? It's the same thing. No. I mean, just saying the garden would be the same thing as the, the livestock cage. But they don't move around. A tomato grown in my garden isn't going to live much difference as a tomato grown in the middle of the woods. It's probably happier in my garden, honestly. Yeah, because I'm going to pick the I'm gonna pick the worms off of it and shit and make sure it like lives its best life before I pick its ovaries out and fucking eat them. <laughs> Which really what they are. They're like their reproductive organs is what we're picking when we root. If you have a problem with eating mushrooms being the reproductive organs, I was thinking all fruit is the reproductive organ. It's literally like it's got the seeds in it. So it's either pulling the testicle or the ovary off of the plant. No, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, we're just bo- ripping the balls off of them fucking things. So you bite into a nice crisp apple or like a peach. Just imagine that. It's a, it's a world like that. No problem like that. No problem with that. And now back to your regularly scheduled nonsense. Okay. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think people should definitely leave us a message or write us an email of their favorite 1999 moment. And maybe we could do like a mini episode where we talk about some of the stuff that like other people have brought up or something like that. Honestly, it doesn't even have to be correct because I have no idea. I'll just take your word for it. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I've got. I'm so excited for 2000s. That's like when we really get into where you, once we kind of get into 2000 and on, we're really going to get to where you are blacked out, right? This is my disclaimer. I very rarely put out disclaimers. This is a different society that I am entering into. So the stories that happen, I am going to have to tell them in that society's context. There's different rules. I'm talking about like, imagine just being cold draw in a completely different, it's, I know it's hard. It's kind of hard for people to fully grasp like being on the outside, especially since like the prison systems are within the United States, but it's a vastly different, not just culture, but society with different economics, different currencies, different professions. I'm going to be really interested to know about your perspective on all this stuff as it's happening. The main things I remember about 2000 is like silver clothes. (laughs) There were so many silver clothes. Everyone was into wearing silver. Like, you know those space blankets? Really? Everyone was wearing, wearing, wearing orange. Really? Because everyone where I was wearing white and black stripes and had a ball attached to their ankle. <laughs> you know, like a big ball. Like a- yes, because when you when you in, go enter prison, you yeah. actually go back in time. In my vision, you're in like an old-timey chain yeah, gang. No, it's- you know what I mean? <laughs> 
January 11th. I was called on the phone. I picked up the phone. They said, I says, perhaps, who is this? They said, this is the blah, 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 sheriff's department. We'd like to step you outside. We have a few questions for you. I says, no, you're not. And I hung up, did a bunch of shit, and like barricade the house and shit like that. They kept calling, blah, blah, blah. Turned up the heat and everything and like barricade in the basement and stuff like that. I just smoked like a bunch of rock. Uh, it turned out, actually, eventually, eventually came out. It took two SWAT teams, uh, like uh, the county SWAT team, the city SWAT team, and then two snipers. And they shut down a two mile radius for about Ridiculous eight or nine that. hours. Uh, eventually came out. I honestly thought at one point during that story, you were going to tell me you started like setting up Cal- Kevin McAllister style traps <laughs> for the cops. <laughs> When you were like, I turned up the heat, I was like, okay, did you turn up the heat? And then like, put it on the door now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> throw marbles all over the floor? <laughs> well, I turned, check, I did. I was fucking home alone in that shit, dude. So I turned the heat up because I was like, you know what they can do? You know what they can do? The fucking, oh uh, the heat vision. Yeah, but you're still going to be hotter. I don't, what am I, a fucking scientist? I'm fucking barricading myself in a house oh with fucking God, two SWAT hilarious. teams and snipers and shit. Lisa. No, but I love I'm how, not like, worried you about being a scientist right thing. now. So they already had you surrounded? by the time they called they'd already Why? shut down a two how mile dangerous radius were you? Oh, around you were like- me. well i was wanted by the yeah it was the fbi oh, and like God. the military and shit like that you know what i mean yeah and then that's different states and that anyway so when i when i finally like agreed to turn ourselves in and stuff like that i was like fuck i need to hide these guns right they called it a lasagna in the pa- in the official paperwork right in the discovery that's presented to the court they said the weapon was retrieved from from a large pan of lasagna that was in the freezer. It was not lasagna. For one thing, I, I I debated that because, right, I had a big sheet pan and I'm like, fuck, right? And I got these guns. I'm like, what do I do with these guns, right? So I put them in the fucking, like, the big turkey pan thing, right? And it's like, boom, I got all this hamburger, right? So I threw this fucking, like, five pounds of hamburger in there and then I'm like, fuck. And, like, they turned the power off at this point, right? So I'm, like, in the dark trying to do all this shit and we didn't have, like, camera with, you know, a phone with light or anything like that. And so I have my fucking lighter essentially is what I'm trying to use right now to, like, see the shit. I'm opening cans. I got like corn cans and god knows what in there and i put a little bit of water in there and like all this tin foil and then i put that in the freezer it's actually kind of a really smart plan i don't know how, how do they find it because yeah. like it, it's a really good idea i thought it was great like idea. i could see if there was something i wanted to hide in my house i mean they probably opened it they probably opened it and they're like yeah that's not the something fuck people is eat this? if it was because if i would have had like been able to make it look legit at least cover the top and shredded cheese so it looks like it's something that's meant to go in the oven but i'm sure it was just some slosh of soups and corns and meats and like, but what does that do to your gun was your gun gonna be usable after that was i worried there was two fucking sw- <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't that just that you didn't want him to find it because that's another charge that's yeah that's so it evidence. didn't matter like what happened to the gun is you like to get your gun back he's like clogged with a meatball you know what and they wouldn't give me the guns back they were soaked in cream of tomato soup Devin. they were useless <laughs> You should have put it. In, you should have put it in the oven. I should have put it in the oven, mm. but I had the oven against yeah, the back door. Do Here's the thing: I deserve to go to prison for the things I did. Like I robbed a bunch of shit. You know what I mean? And I hurt people that shouldn't have been hurt. You know what I mean? And for that, I can't take that back. I have to look back on it in a whimsical way for myself, I guess, to make sense of it. So I don't want to come off across like I'm making light. I deserve to go to prison. I deserve the time, and I got lucky? Question mark in being able to be where I'm at today. So I do make light of the yeah. situation, but. Dick bag disclaimer. I'm not a horrible person. <laughs> Just have a dark sense of humor. I'm not a horrible person. Here's a bunch of horrible shit I've done. I was trying to fucking Andy Kaufman it. They don't understand. They never did. <laughs> Party like it's 1999 with Party Gravy. Still don't have plans for Y2K New Year's Eve? There's plenty left to do, and the list keeps growing. For some, ringing in this historic New Year's Eve presents a no-brainer. Pack a bong and head off to swill malt liquor in a glitzy shithole, or pack up the lasagna full of guns, the glass pipe and the canned gravy and hole up in the basement. But whether the dawn of the new millennium is the end of the world, federal state incarceration, the perfect excuse to party or just plain wrong, hey, technically it won't be the 21st century until 2001, Y2K presents a reason to do something special this New Year's, and who are we to quibble over quantum mechanics when there's so much fun to be had? Confined party plans are just getting started, and so for the many of us who aren't thinking of jetting off to Paris or stockpiling for the apocalypse, here's a few ideas on how you should be planning to ring in 2000, just to get the celebration planning started. 11 a.m. join all six of the Smash Mouth bands for field day at Irrelevance Park 
$5 cover at door, all age, venue special games to include. Choose your favorite Smash Mouth Band and spots still available for the How to Make and Build Your Own Smash Mouth Band and Brand Seminar. 8 p.m. All Age Show. Are Kelly and Celine Dion will be playing at the Unfortunate in the Retrospect District. 11 p.m. Watch the balls drop in sync Backstreet Boys as they play in the Millennium at the Equivalent Ballroom. More events to follow. See you there. Brought to you by Limited Intelligence Technologies Gravy. It's not a party. If you ain't got the gravy, a subsidiary of Limited Intelligence Podcast, a party gravy technology division. And remember kids, bladder controlled beaver says, always pee before leaving the space realm. This podcast is powered by LI Technology. When you're looking to give your business a crippling disadvantage that traditional AI companies just won't offer, think limited intelligence. Intelligence that offers comfort in an unforeseeable future.